Welcome to Agenda Edina, a news program summarizing the actions taken at City Hall that affect you most. I'm your host, Dorothea Marty. A popular restaurant in Minneapolis will soon open a second location in Edina. Town Hall Brewery will remodel and expand the existing gas station building at 4500 Valley View Road as a restaurant. With a gas station motif, the new restaurant will be called Town Hall Station. Yeah, it's certainly something new. There, there isn't a lot of options in Edina. Um, and that excites us a lot. Um, I think it's something a little bit different. Uh, most of our places, we, we look at the location and the building and the community, um, and we try to cater the, the uh, restaurant to that. Um, and Wally's gas, gas station is really unique, um, and Town Hall Station, I think, fits that very well. Greenlighting the neighborhood restaurant, the city council rezoned the site and approved the site plan with building, signage, and parking space variances. Construction is set to begin soon. Town Hall Station could open as early as the start of the new year. Finding joy in our lives is something we all have in common, and the Edina Human Rights and Relations Commission hopes to bring people together to discuss this essential part of life. The commission will host Leading a Meaningful Life and Interfaith Conversation with Religious Leaders about joy, appreciation, and gratitude. The event will be held 6 p.m. October 27th at Centennial Lakes Park. Very difficult times. There's a lot of concern about other and a lot of fear about the unknown. Um, and so we thought it would be great to bring together spiritual leaders from both Western and Eastern religions to help people understand that there's really a lot more similar about us than there is different. The event will feature several different religious leaders, including Father Kevin Finnegan, Reverend Steve Hagen, Rabbi Michael Latz, and Imam Asad Zaman. What I'd love people to walk away from this event with is a new perspective on a different religion, a different faith, um, and a deeper understanding of their own faith and what it means to them to lead a life worth living. The dialogue is free and open to the public. If you mention the name E. Dudley Parsons in the Morningside neighborhood, you're likely to get a smirk, smile, or hear a political opinion. And a new memoir penned by Parsons' granddaughter preserves stories about her grandfather, family, and world history. We sat down with Janet Parsons Mackey to hear her story. For me, this whole list of members and topics. Jane Addams spoke there. What started as a collection of essays to preserve history for her family grew into publishing a book to share with others. This experience showed him the need well, for The book is about my journey to understand my grandfather and to, in a way, welcome him back into the family. He was a very politically progressive person, outspoken, never hesitated to share his conviction. Well, at one point, I actually thought he was a communist. And I came to the conclusion that he wasn't. But he was a very liberal, liberal person. Toward the end of World War II, there began to be this fear of communism and of any leftist kind of leanings. And we know about the blacklist and the McCarthy era. Well, my father could have lost his job, where well, that was the fear anyway. He had the same name as my grandfather and had to constantly say, no, I didn't write that letter. No, I didn't make that statement. So. The result in the family was a shutdown of this political conversation. You don't talk about it. You know, you don't want to raise fears. You want to be friends with your neighbors. You don't want their enmity. Janet's great-grandfather arrived in Morningside circa 1909, right around the time the Grimes brothers platted and opened up the neighborhood. My great-grandfather, who helped start this church, um, in about 1909, here in Morningside, had been a temperance preacher and moved, bought five lots on France Avenue. At that point, he said, I don't want to live in any community where people aren't willing to study the Bible. So he gathered these meetings, and then eventually my grandfather moved in shortly after 1909. Janet's father was a contributing writer for early editions of About Town, documenting Edina's early history. And he did a lot of research on them. Um, I don't know how many there are, maybe 15 or so that he wrote. They're 
very good reading, I find. He was a founding member of the Edina Historical Society. It's a significant family value that you have to make the place better when you leave it, as in the Boy Scouts, than when you arrive. And you have to find your way of doing that. Through this journey researching the stories of three significant generations, Janet was reminded about the importance of history in our community and our lives. I think it does help us shed light on what's going on in the present. From Morningside, Matt Koskinen, Edina TV. Janet now lives in Virginia and returns to Minnesota annually to connect with family and friends. We hope you're enjoying Fall in Edina. Thank you for watching this episode of Agenda Edina. I'm your host, Dorothea Marty.